a drink. I'm Alex and today I'm going to be showing you some interesting twists on the Negroni. So we're going to make two cocktails today. The first is going to be my twist on a Negroni and the second one is going to be my twist on the Boulevardier which is a variation of the Negroni invented just a little bit later. So they were both invented in the early 19th century. Nope, early 20th century and the Negroni was invented in Florence in a cafe by a man called Count Negroni. So already popular at that time was a cocktail called the Americano. The Americano was a taller cocktail that consisted of Campari, sweet vermouth and soda water and it was typically garnished with a lemon peel. So Count Negroni went into the cafe and one day he said I want something a bit stronger, swap out the soda for gin. And so the bartender did, he found it delicious, and there we are with the Negroni. And so a little later in time, in Paris, an American woman put a twist on the Negroni and invented the Boulevardier. She worked for a magazine called Boulevardier, which was apparently a sort of um, French style of the New Yorker magazine. So that's where it got its name, and she just swapped out the gin for bourbon. Now both of these cocktails are extremely easy, they are three equal parts of the ingredients and you can riff on them as many times as you would like, especially these days there are so many different Amaros out there to try, different vermouths, you go crazy, you know? The Negroni, invented in 1919, obviously got its name from Count Negroni who uh, coined it and it's thought that maybe he... Um, wanted to swap it out for gin because he'd spent some time in the UK. Interestingly enough, he'd also spent a lot of time in America in his 20s and I found some interesting pieces in articles about him describing how he would often wear head-to-toe cowboy gear, which is really not what you think of typically when you think of a sophisticated Negroni. Anyway, enough of me talking, let's get into it. Let's start with my variation on the Negroni. So. The first drink that we're going to do is the twist on the Negroni and today we're going to be using one of my favourite Amaros which is this guy, the Zucca Rhubarbaro. Zucca, sorry. Um, this is made from a base of rhubarb as the name gives away. It's Italian as Amaros traditionally are and it's delicious. It's not too bitter, it's not too sweet. I really like it, I think it works well with the gin. So let's give it a go. I also have some gin and I'm just going to use a Bianco Vermouth. This is sweet. You could use the red if you prefer. So to build this drink, I'm going to take your mixing glass. Now I'm going to go in with one small and one real big boy. Meanwhile, I'm going to put another big boy in my Glass of choice, this is, I think you call this a double old fashioned glass. I like the fact it has a heavy bottom, it just feels kind of more substantial. So, in we go with one ounce of the Rhubarbaro. You could of course use Campari, or you know, if you've got a whole bank of vermouths at home like I do, then go crazy. That's the beauty of this drink, because it's equal parts, and don't get me started, we could change up the measures, but that would just make things extra complicated. Because it's equal parts, you can pretty much play with it, as you'll see from the Boulevardier, the next drink that we're gonna make. So then we're going in with an ounce of the vermouth. Wow, that Rhubarbaro is strong. Getting a lot of herbaceous notes. Then one ounce of gin. You're going to take a bar spoon and you're just going to stir this. Now, you can build this straight in the glass, that's what I normally do, but I just thought we'd be fancy and we'd stir it over ice first. If you are going to build it straight in the glass, don't forget to stir it because just pouring it over the ice is not going to give you a cold drink and it's not going to dilute it appropriately either. Another thing you can do with these is make them ahead of time and they keep really nicely in the fridge. You could barrel age it if you're feeling fancy. But you know, we're all about keeping it simple. 
I wanted this channel to be about making cocktails at home in an easy, non-intimidating way for you guys. Go for it with whatever you've got. Not too much fussing around. So we're gonna take, this is called a julep strainer. The other one's the Hawthorne strainer. And we're gonna strain that into our glass. Now obviously, depending on what Amaro you use, you will end up with a different color beverage. It's not gonna be that bright red that you're used to seeing when Campari goes in, but I think this color is super interesting too. Now, as far as garnish goes, you could garnish with an orange peel. I'm actually gonna shake it up a bit and use a grapefruit. And uh, don't tell anyone, I stole this from someone's tree in Palm Springs when I was there on the weekend. So, take a good vegetable peeler. Please be careful. We don't want any peeled fingers. I'm gonna take a nice. Ooh, nice long strip. Now, let's see if we can catch this on camera. I'm gonna squeeze, oh yes. The uh, oil's out of here. I'm gonna roll it around the edge of the glass. And I'm just gonna tuck it in like that. So there is our first cocktail, my riff on the Negroni made with Rebarbaro. I'm gonna go rinse this out and we'll be back to make our second cocktail, which is the Boulevardier. Okay, we're back. And now we're gonna move on to the second drink, which is a twist on the Boulevardier again. I uh, like to funk things up a bit, so we're not gonna just go with the standard recipe. For this one, we're gonna use bourbon. I just have this wild turkey. If you have a favorite bourbon, go for it, but I wouldn't use anything that you would, you know, sip on, because it's gonna be slightly lost in this cocktail. So that's gonna go in place of the gin. And then I'm gonna use this, which is called Granada Valet. It's a Mexican Amaro. I think it actually had gone out of production. Somebody revived it recently, but I could be wrong on that. Um, it's also made with the cochineal bugs, which give it the bright red color. Campari has the same color, but unfortunately, Campari is now um, not made with the original natural coloring that it used to be. But I suppose bugs can put some people off. So, in we go with one large and one small. As far as the ice goes, please don't worry too much. I have one of those, um, I'll link it down below, one of those large ice cube molds, the silicon ones for making the big cubes. Some places, I know in the UK, it was a lot easier to buy large ice at the supermarket. Just try and make sure that it's not crushed ice, because that is really gonna change up your cocktail, but don't get too hung up on it, you know? Whatever you can get your hands on. So, same proportions. One ounce of the valet. One ounce of sweet vermouth. Again, if you have Rosso vermouth, that's absolutely fine too. You just don't want a dry vermouth with this. I like to pair this with the bourbon because this is a little bit more aggressive than Campari and I think the extra sweetness that you get from the bourbon can kind of mellow it out nicely. So, one ounce of bourbon. And we've got a plane going by. At least it's not one of the police helicopters that we usually have, so I guess you should be grateful for small mercies. So we're gonna stir that again. Now with this one, we're gonna to want to make sure we really do stir it properly because I'm gonna serve it up so there will be no ice to continue chilling or diluting it once it's in its vessel. Okay, now, same straining procedure. I thought we'd, uh, with a little nod to the 20s when I believe this cocktail was invented, use a coupe with this cute gold rim but you could serve it um, on a large ice cube if you'd prefer. This one is gonna give you that lovely red color. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go with the classic orange peel for this one. I think it complements the notes and the bourbon really nicely. Now, I think this time, 
So this is how the peel has come off the orange. I'm gonna just trim it with a sharp knife to tidy it up a little bit, make it fancy. One likes a fancy drink. And again, let's see if we can capture this. Oh yes, I think the key is to not keep your citrus in the fridge. Even if you do normally store them in the fridge, just take them out maybe an hour before you're gonna make a cocktail and it really makes the difference. So just place that in there and there we have it. The Negroni twist and the Boulevardier twist. So let's give them a taste. Cheers. Oh yes. That's really good. The orange really just brings it all together at the end. Um, the bourbon brings a nice warmth that you don't quite get in the gin with your regular Negroni. It's more, maybe more of a wintry drink, more comforting. I would say maybe this would be more of an after dinner drink, whereas perhaps your Negroni with gin would be more of a pre-dinner, wet the appetite. Let's give this one a try. Oh, very smooth. Much smoother than you would expect, actually. Um, I picked this up at an eatily, but if you can get your hands on it, give it a go, it's really worth it. Yeah, so. Try it out. Uh, I will leave the recipes in the description box below. And I hope that you enjoy making some of these at home. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like me to make next, please just leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see more of you around here on my new channel. Once again, I'm Alex and this is Lady in the Drink.